Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and today we're stepping out into the bold. I am excited to be talking about a new bold life that you can make for yourself. And my guest today is the expert in that area. Um, and you'll hear a little bit more about how she's the expert in that area. But let me introduce you to Jessica Fru. She is, I love, I love the, the summary. You're a mom, a wife, an ex-wife, a stepmom, and a bold action taker. And the key here for us all today, folks, is the bold action taker. She has, I found her through her successful podcast, which is called, fabulous name, Husband-in-Law. And she records that with her current husband, Matt, and with her ex-husband, Steve. So that ought to get your interest right there, right? So we've got current husband <laughs> and ex-husband. I don't think my current husband and my ex-husband, although they get along, I don't know if they do a podcast together, but the podcast together, they <laughs> share their stories of love, marriage, coming out, divorce, remarriage, and co-parenting. And as we were just talking about, Jessica, to help other people, I think I love you just said, um, it's a story we're willing to share. And so we put it out there. So I love that you do that. So thank you so much for joining me, Jessica. Thanks for having me, Susan. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a great uh, conversation. And one of the things I wanted to point out is you've sent me, whoops, can people see it? Yes. If you're not, if you're listening and not seeing this on the video, it's the Boldology Journal, The Art of Being Bold. Um, so I want to dive into being bold. But as I just said in that intro, like so many of my guests, you have had your own journey through the divorce process. And that's where my most of my listeners are. They're either thinking about divorce, peddling their way through divorce, or climbing out on the other side to create that bold life or that new life. So could you give us just a little of your background? I always find that that gives people that connection. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And just like hearing you say that and thinking about those people, it like pulls at my heartstrings to think about being in those places. Each of those places is so hard and so real, but hearing other people's stories really does help. And that is why we share. So I was married to my first husband for seven years. Um, we are, well, we were <laughs> uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So we're Mormon and, and I still am, but my ex-husband is not. Um, and during that seven years, it came out that he was gay. He had always kind of pushed that down and, and denied that in himself. And we realized that he came to terms with it a couple years into our marriage. Um, but we continue to stay married because we were genuinely happy and we enjoyed each other. We had a good time together. Uh, we had a good sex life. That's a question people always want to ask me. Well, how was the sex? <laughs> like, it was fine. We connected emotionally and therefore we connected sexually, which, which worked out great. Um, and we had a daughter together about five years into our marriage. And then a couple years after she was born, um, we, we made a big move and lost a lot of our support system around that. And I think Steve really just started to realize he needed to embrace the side of himself and be true to who he was and and is. And so um, he did end up having an affair. We tried to work through that because he still wasn't sure he wanted to leave. But at that point, it was just he wasn't attracted to me anymore after he had been with a man. And it, it created all of these other problems as affairs typically do. Um, so we did eventually get divorced. We did date again after we got divorced because he just wasn't happy and couldn't come to terms with everything. Um, and that was a complete mess, a complete disaster, but such a great process to go through to know that we had made the right decision because you brought up people who are trying to decide if the divorce is the right thing or not. And I very much relate to that because you do want to know that you've done what you could and you made the right decision for you, for your, for your child um, and for your ex. Like you want everybody to make sure that it's the right move. Uh, I have since remarried and I've been married now for seven years. My husband has two kids and I of course have one from my previous marriage. We have, or he has a very high conflict ex that we deal with. So we have like this weird blend of understanding that having a, an amic amicable, great relationship with your ex does not always work and that you have to figure out how to make the other relationship work um, so that it works the best for the kids. And that's what it comes down to is figuring out those boundaries and things that work so that you can show up for your kids um, and for yourself so that you're protecting yourself and all those boundaries. Um, so yeah, that's basically, 
in a nutshell, our story and where we're at right now. Well, that really sort of brings, I mean, you've had almost every experience I've gone through on all of my episodes uh, wrapped into one life experience there. But there's so much in there, you know, nobody's experience of divorce or any you know, significant change in life is exactly the same as anyone else's. But yeah. as you you said right there, the emotional content very often is the same. Um, fear, yes. anger, all of those things that we might go through, um, feelings of betrayal and lack of trust, those can come in. And when you're dealing with a high conflict X on any side of the equation, uh, that also adds, you know, a, an, an interesting layer. So telling the stories, I think, is so important. Um, and you probably get this with your listeners. I get people all the time saying, you know, just made me feel better to hear the person who was talking on your show yes. or to hear you. Do you guys get that? Yeah, it's no, you're not alone, even if it's not the exact same experience or whatever. But like you're saying, those feelings are the same. And to realize that you can come out of that for the better. Like you can make your life what you want it to be. And that's that's where the bold action comes in for us is, is understanding that, okay, I can take this experience and create what I want to out of it now. This isn't what I planned on, but now I am going to decide how I want my life to look from here. And yes, I will pivot. And yes, it will probably change plans along the way, but at least you can create a vision for what you want and how you want to continue. Um, because yeah, nobody plans on getting divorced. And so it's just, or being a step parent. That's the other thing I'm always like, you don't plan to be a step parent ever. And so it's just part of re reframing what you think your life will look like. So that's, it's so prophetic that we're talking about this topic today. So I, I put out a blog post for our friends over at Divorced Over 40. Daniel Harold was on the show recently and the post was all about Divorce is not a failure, it's an opportunity. That's exactly what went out today. And I always, that is actually one of my things, I guess, that I would say, I say, right? People see this, this you never think you're going to get divorced. So then when you do, suddenly this future you thought you had with the mm -hmm. spouse is gone. And you see it as a big black void. But what I'm always encouraging people is to see it as the beautiful, colorful palette behind you, for those who are watching this on the video, or just see it <laughs> as a, a blank palette, but not a black hole, a blank palette where you can do what you were just talking about, create a future yes. for yourself. That is my yeah. favorite message. So, but you do it with boldness. So yes. what, what do you mean by that? So I think often when people think of being bold, they think that you have to be loud and, and colorful and, and do crazy things or whatever. But really what it means to be bold is to know who you are, to be so in tune with who you are that you know what it is you want. So then you can create the life that you want, like you're saying. And you have to reevaluate who you are and what you want along the way. Because yes, what I wanted was to keep my marriage intact and to be married to the same man um, and raise our daughter together, but that is not what I got. And so then I have have to think, okay, so now this new version of me, this new idea of my life, how am I going to take that and look at that in a way, understand who I am in this moment to know what it is I want going forward. Uh, and so that's really, that's really the gist of it is getting to know yourself when those changes happen, when you're pivoting. And I truly believe you can make a habit of getting to know yourself so that it's easy. So when you get in that situation, you can kind of reevaluate more quickly. You can see, okay, I, I need to process here. Even like just acknowledging that, that I need to process this change. I need to understand what this looks like for me going forward and what outcome I want so that I can take steps now to get there instead of fumbling along and like, you're going to fumble, but still like having more of an idea of how to get there, uh, taking a little bit of the emotion out of it in the moment that really helps if you have an idea of where you want to go and know how to process those things. So I, it's fascinates me that you say that, take the emotion out of it, because I, it's hard for me to consider a time in life, having gone through it myself and going through it with hundreds of people now for decades, how do you take that? Because I would love, I mean, this is where I think we can really hone in on what's going to be helpful to people. Where, where, how do you take that deep breath 
and find the pause amidst the pain and the anger and the fear that is going on in the moment of a divorce to be able to get to know yourself again, because you're so right. We lose ourselves and we lose a lot of our perception of what works for us when we are immersed in a relationship that's not working. So what would you tell someone who needs to get back on in touch with themselves? So I really encourage people to start asking yourself powerful questions. And actually, I have an awesome free worksheet, sheet, um, workbook, digital one that you can get and kind of start going through this process of just um, asking yourself powerful questions. Take time to journal. Take time to maybe talk things out with somebody that really listens and isn't trying to tell you what to do. Like that's super key. You need somebody, if you're going to talk through it, it needs to be somebody that's willing to just listen and maybe give you questions like prompt this out of you. Um, but just just sit in those questions and really create some boundaries around the fact that maybe you need some time to figure out what it is you want um, and express that to the person that you're going through the divorce with of, hey, I need just a little bit of time to figure out what it is I really need and want out of this. Um, and I hope that you will do the same so that we can come back and talk about that and have a conversation, a real conversation that's not heated, that's not sobbing or angry, you know, all of those things. Um, because those are such real raw emotions going through a divorce, any divorce. And so you just need to, I, I really think it does come down to asking yourself the questions and creating time and space just for yourself. I, I, when Steve and I got divorced, we were living in Oklahoma and I had, we owned a house in Boise, which is where I live now and where we had lived before. And um, I took my daughter and drove home to Boise to go live in the house Steve and I owned in Boise. And I remember my mom and dad are calling me, can I please come down and drive with you? Can I please come down and drive with you? I'm like, no, my brother's calling me, please, please let me come drive with you. I will be there tomorrow. And I'm like, no. I need this time to cry in my car, to sing as loud as I want, to process in the way that I need to process so that I have this little bit of time to myself and I continue to make that time. I love to run. That was time that I went and, and really dove into that of, okay, what do I want this to look like? How do I process this next step? And, and it can just be one step at a time. Okay, what, what do I want this next step to look like to get me to where I wanna go? So I really think, you have to learn kind of quickly on how to create space for yourself and boundaries to silence some of that noise and be at peace with where you're going. Yeah, you know that that taking a breath, taking a pause, what happens with so many people, that pendulum of should I stay or should I go? The should the marriage, you know, go on? Can we work this out? No, it can't. Yes, it can. That that limbo, I always call it the, the should I stay or should mm -hmm. I go limbo, really sucks a lot of energy out of you. And when people get to the point where they, they finally are certain or at least as close to certain as anyone can be that, yes, it's time to go. Yeah. Many times they then, because they finally have made that decision, they feel they need to launch into it. I need to get an attorney. I need to get paperwork filed. We need to split up our stuff. And we need to do this. And honestly, one of you know what I just heard you say, what I heard my friend Ben and uh, Ben Heldfon and Nikki DeBartolo say from our happy divorce, one of the keys they say to their happy divorce is that they took a breather between deciding to divorce and moving through the process. So I, I that is such a valuable yes. if you can. If you can create that space for yourself, that is so important. And the other thing that I thought was really critical was you said you don't have to decide your whole future all at once. You can decide the next step. It's overwhelming, right? Yeah. It's like a fire hose that comes at yes. you. Yeah. So doing yeah. That and there were little... like a few things that I. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, do, being able <laughs> oh. to come up with this one step at a time is very helpful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and you want a general idea of where you're going, but 
you don't have to like know all of the details on how you're going to get there and, and focus it down to steps that are manageable because there's so much that feels so unmanageable in that moment that when you can focus on those, it's so powerful. And I want to touch on one more thing you said that I, should I stay or should I go? Um, I actually just made a post that said, should I stay or should I grow? And that same idea of you're going to grow and yes, staying might feel comfortable. It might, I might, it might seem like there's less trouble there, but if you stay there, it's going to grow to double. Like if you're staying in a situation that you feel like I should stay in, um, it's not going to serve you. So I've really leaned into this idea of when you take bold action, you are letting go of this. I should mindset. I should stay married. I should want to be with this person. I should try to keep my family together. Um, and it transfers over to all areas of your life. I should want to be this type of mom, but I'm not, I should want to be this type of parent. I'm not, I should, whatever it is, like we need to get ourselves out of that. I should, so that we are showing up in a way that feels more conducive to, I want, I need, or I can, I can make that decision. Um, I could do that. Do I really want to, is that really going to feel in line with what I truly want? Yeah. The, the uh, Dr. Elizabeth calls it stop shooting on yourself. So because we do that. <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> right? Stop shooting on yourself. Yes, we do. And she's right. Yes, we, we tell ourselves. I guess it comes down to those stories we tell ourselves. It shouldn't be like this. Yep. I should be able to yep. make this work. And and it's I, there's such a freedom when you stop doing that to yourself. Um, and and that's For clearly. Sure. A, a little place that you've managed, to, you know, to get to, and the to do it in with boldness. I guess I would say I, I love that yeah that concept. Um, so how, you know, everyone I talk to who has a good relationship with their ex now will say, well, it wasn't easy. Like we had to go through some stuff to do that. So did how how did that work out for the two of you? You know, for us, it was relatively easy, but that, and I say relatively, there was a lot of pain, of course, because you're getting divorced. He's had an affair. Like there's a lot of emotion in that, but actually being able to stay friends um, and, and be amicable and work together was much easier than I thought it was going to be, but it was because um, we we're very honest with each other and very respectful of each other's boundaries of just saying, Hey, um, today I, I can't engage with you. Like we need to talk about this another day and I'm happy to talk about it, but right now I can't. And, and just acknowledging those things and accepting those things made it so much easier. And it also made it easier. Like it's a lot harder to go through it all angry and bitter and fighting it's so much harder than if you can figure out a way to do it that works for you, to find this space, to say, hey, I'm sorry. And sometimes that space has to be done through lawyers or whatever of saying, um, them communicating that to the other person of, hey, I, I want to have this conversation, but I am not ready to in this moment. I love that you're bringing it up, but maybe we can we can move to that next week or in just a couple of days, just give me a little time to process uh, and, and just respecting that for the other person too and realizing it's that golden rule, right? If I want them to respect me and to understand where I'm coming from and, and maybe need some space every once in a while, then maybe I can give that to them. Then I can show them that space in those moments and understand that this is hard for everybody, not just me. Yeah, you use the magic word boundaries there. And I think that has to be a boundaries. part of the boldness uh, recipe, I'll yes. call it. You know, healthy yes. boundaries. Yes I, yes, I talk about setting bold boundaries all the time. And, and the key to setting those bold boundaries, I always go back to this, is knowing what you want and knowing who you are so that you can show up. And that takes some trial and error, like establishing boundaries, take some hit and miss uh, and getting uncomfortable, like maybe putting yourself in a situation you thought, hey, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be uncom uncomfortable with this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. My husband talks about that, like our first um, Mother's Day together. I invited Steve over because he wasn't going home to his 
to his parents' house and uh, we had all of our family getting together and it's a family day. And Steve or Matt went to his mom and was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I don't know if I'm okay with Steve coming. It's Mother's Day, like why? Um, Matt's family is going to be there. And I had asked Matt if he was fine with it. And he told me, oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and she told him, she's like, Matt, put yourself in this situation. See how you feel afterwards. If it didn't feel right, talk to Jessica about it. Like, you know, she's going to be open to talking about it, but let yourself feel it. Let yourself be there and see how it goes. And, and he was fine with it. And we have almost every holiday together from there on out. And it was, it's just that idea of, okay, okay, I can, I can let myself be a little bit uncomfortable here. You don't want to get crazy. Don't, don't do something drastic, but in little situations, maybe after you feel a little comfortable, let yourself get uncomfortable to see, okay, maybe I can broaden this boundary just a little bit. Um, like I said, don't get too crazy. <laughs> Make sure you, you understand yourself enough to know, okay, that one's definitely, like, I'm not going on a trip with him right now. That's not okay. <laughs> we might yeah. get there, but not right now. Well, we, there yeah. are different levels of boundary for, for sure, yes. but they are, they're hard. You know, it brings to mind what you were just saying. Yes. My husband said something to me the other day and it was bringing up something. He wanted to do something and it was out of the blue. And in the moment, my first reaction was kind of like your husband. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. And I said that and then almost immediately went, wait, I don't. No, yeah. I'm not sure. And so I said to him, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to have an opinion on that yet. Can we talk about it later? And I felt like that was like, I'm like, woohoo. I just need a boundary. Yeah. And of course he was fine. He's like, of course, I just sprung it on you. We can talk yes. about it whenever you want to. For whatever reason for me, that was like a big high five to myself that I was like, you know what? I didn't feel in the moment it's a I had big to give deal. the deal. Yeah. I didn't have to give that sure it's fine answer but also you just said yes. you can also push yourself into the discomfort zone a little bit that's maybe that's being bold yeah yeah and i think that is being bold of knowing how far you can push yourself to kind of see what feels right and what doesn't and then pivot and evaluate after you've done that and that's one of the things you held up my boldology journal that's one of the things that it, it's it's creating that habit of asking yourself okay what felt comfortable in this situation? What didn't feel comfortable? Is there a way I can make this comfortable because I want to continue forward? Or is this just a situation I shouldn't put myself in again? Like it, it's just daily practice of going through those things of where you felt discomfort and why so that you get to know and understand yourself better. Yeah, I think there's such value in that and, and also being kind to yourself while you're figuring it out. And you will make mistakes yes. and you'll find yourself- yes in situations where you're like, God, I wish I hadn't done that. But isn't there a, a, a yep. saying that says you grow in discomfort or in discomfort, we find growth. Yep. I know in change, we find growth. So maybe sometimes, you know, and, and definitely when it comes to the kids, we have to push ourselves sometimes yep. out of that comfort zone. You were saying really the, the final sure. goal is to make this work for your kids. So you must, I mean, to get together for holidays. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so when I went into my divorce, I, you know, growing up, you hear about divorces and how ugly they are. And, and I'd never been impacted directly by divorce, but I had seen friends or people at church or whoever who had gone through divorce. And it was always vicious. And I watched my poor friends and, and kids that I saw and I, my heart just hurt for them. And I did not want that to be my daughter. Like that was my ultimate goal in going through divorce as I was like, okay, I am here. This is the reality. I stayed married to a gay man. I knew he was gay when I had a child with him. And so I need to accept this new reality and move forward and own it. And ultimately what I wanted was for our daughter to have two parents that she knew loved her, that communicated. That was my biggest deal. I did not want to be somebody that dropped my kid off at school in the morning and, and he had to pick her up in the evening like we couldn't have contact, you know. Um, that that part of it broke my heart that was what would really bring me down like that's that's the one thing i didn't want um i didn't want the divorce but ultimately i didn't want my daughter in that situation and so that really knowing that helped me focus in on okay how do we show up for this kid how do we make this a good experience for her because i don't want her feeling awkward at her wedding or her graduation or her birthday party or any of those things that mom and dad are going to be together or choosing 
even whose house she has to be at um, for holidays. Like we're going to go to my parents' house for Christmas Eve, and then we'll go to my dad's house on Christmas Day, and then we'll go back to my mom's. Like all of that is so difficult. And um, so we've really just made it a point. Like, yes, we don't spend every holiday together, but if Steve's in town, he's at our house for holidays. And if they don't go to his family's house for holidays, he's with my family for holidays. Like it's just how we do it and we've made it work. And it brings me so much joy um, every time that Steve's, I mean, he's over for dinner once or twice a week and it just fills me with joy that we can do that and that we have this relationship and that she knows, you know, mom and dad love each other. They respect each other. They care about each other. Um, and it, it makes a huge difference in her life. And I, and I see the, the difference because my stepkids don't have that. And there is a drastic difference. And while we've tried to create some of that, it just doesn't happen. And so we know that's not for everybody and it can't happen for everybody. Um, but you do what you can. You set the boundaries to protect yourself and your kids and, and you continue forward. That's that right there, that story that you just told and the juxtaposition between the, the two situations for the children in your family, first of all, hits me here. Um, my heart hurts for your stepchildren, uh, something that I deal with too. In, in life all the time. Um, but my heart also sings for your daughter because I do know how much hard work there is in making choices that put her at that top of the list. And sometimes we then do have to put ourselves way down on the list, you know, and we really do have to push those comfort zones, but, you know, bravo to you and her father um, to be able to do that. And, and what you get blessed with is a happy, healthy child. Um, so I, you know, just for listeners right there who are contemplating divorce, thinking that it's going to ruin your ch child's life, I'll say it again. I've said it in other episodes. It is not a divorce that will have a, a negative impact on your child. It is how you handle the divorce and the level of conflict between yes. you. And that's why, unfortunately, you, you do have some high conflict in your husband's ex family situation. So yeah. um, yep. uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it. it and I went into it like when I met my husband and meeting his ex-wife, so hopeful that we were going to have a similar relationship, that we would be able to be friends and do all of those things. And um, I'd invite her to go to the gym with me. We'd work out together. I would tell her when we were going to the pool, when we had the kids during the summer, because I knew she'd want to meet us there and, and really created those opportunities to grow together. Um, and then at some point it was not well received. And the things that I was sharing with her, because I, I, viewed her as a friend. I wanted her to trust me and I wanted to trust her. And, and I treated our relationship that way. It became apparent that that was not going to work. And, um, the things that were most special to me and she knew were like who I was made me who I was were taken and used against me. And that's when I was like, all right, shut down. We have to reevaluate boundaries. Um, and, and putting up those boundaries, although it, stinks and it's not what we wanted at the same time has created more stability for the kids like it's it's made it so that they don't feel in the middle as often um and they don't have to see the arguing or the contention as often hopefully for the most part on our end it's kept just between you know matt and his ex and so there's that that it does help them even though it stinks that it can't be better but it's the best that what as would for what you have and that's all that matters that's all that matters you make the best out of the situation that is the perfect way to sum that situation up and that is something again i hope listeners just heard you cannot change the high conflict you are not going no. to change a high conflict personality all you can control is yourself and the boundaries you're set but what you said that's so important is that's what gave your stepchildren some stability, at least within yes. your household and family. And that is what you can do for them. So sending the four page long emails that where you explain to your high conflict ex what everything they're doing wrong isn't going to help. Learning how to set, let's call them bold boundaries is yes. what's going to help. Absolutely. Yep. So I, yep. that's, that's just lovely. I mean, it, it, I, I love that you're able to take both sides of that coin because you've lived them and really mm -hmm. have turned them to the best 
on both sides of the fence. I mean, I, I think people would say, oh, well, a, an amicable divorce, obviously that's easy. I don't know that anyone listening hopefully understands an amicable divorce is still takes effort on both parties part. And you still are sure. always going to be taking that backseat to your child. So I know how much work that went into that. But I, I love that you guys have gotten there and that you've gotten to this point where you're putting your message out constantly, where you're you're encouraging people to be bold. Um, so, you know, how how did bold become your your motto? Let's let's wrap it up with that. So um, growing up, my dad would always tell me when I was faced with like a tough decision and even like small decisions where I was just trying to figure out how to show up for myself, basically, he would always say, Jessica, you need to be, be, you need to be, be. And that always meant to be bold, just be bold. And for me, that really stuck with me of realizing, okay, I need to, I need to set my boundary in this area and I need to know what it is I want and just do that thing no matter what anybody else is saying, no matter what I shoulds are going through my head, but focusing on what it is I really want and, and stick to that. Um, if it doesn't work out, then I go, Hey, this didn't work and be, be bold enough, be humble enough. I always say being bold and being humble go together to then pivot and find what does work. Um, it's not that you're set in your ways or that you're determined to always be right, but that you follow what feels right for you in that moment. And so I just always hear my dad in the back of my head and he still tells me this to this day to be bold. And so when Steve and I, Matt, were talking about our journeys and what we wanted to really share with people and what we wanted them to get out of our podcast and our stories is that you have to be bold in following your heart, in doing what feels right for you, uh, even if that looks different than what you'd been told, even if that looks different than how you grew up, um, you need to be true to what it is that speaks to you. And so you, you have to be bold. It takes, it takes a certain amount of boldness to do that. So that's where be bold came from. It's thanks to my dad. <laughs> Which is probably the best kind of uh, uh, motto that you can have and best genesis for a motto. So I, I love that yep. story. I still hear things dad, that my dad said to me all the time in my, in mm -hmm. my head. Unfortunately, he's not with me, but it was funny because actually something happened the other day that reminded me of him. And I actually reached and picked up my phone because I was going to call him to tell him about it. So I, I think oh. that it's wonderful. Oh, but you know what? It was wonderful because that means I was thinking of him. He was still with me. You so have I, that sentiment. Yes. Oh, I yeah. love it. Love those moments. Um, so I want to t make sure everyone, first off, everyone go listen to the podcast. Um, husband in law, you can find it where uh, on all major podcast outlets. It's it's really a fascinating show, and you really all do share, so that other people mm -hmm. can you know hear your story, hear your tale. Whether you know, as I, we said at the beginning, everyone's story is different, but the emotions are often yes. the same, and that's you yes. share very generously with people. But also tell them how else they can find you. Um, so we are also on Instagram under at husband in law. You can find us there. I do have a Facebook group that's called bold action takers. You can find me there as well. And that really is the best place to go either Instagram or my Facebook group because you will find all the other information to pick up my journal, um, my book, or like that worksheet we talked about about changing your story to create a story that feels right to you. So to it really gets you started on knowing where you want to go and what you want to do. Um, I do have, we just started a Be Bold Boot Camp. It started in January, but you can register for February. Um, there's open enrollment at the end of January. So go check that out. You can get on the waiting list and then pop in there when we start in February. And it's really a great way to, if we always hear about like-minded communities, it's, it's not like-minded, but it's a community of people taking bold action um, and figuring out what it is for you that you wanna do. So those are some great ways to connect with us. Yeah, well, and I, I actually, Be Bold Bootcamp, I mean, the BBB now instead of just BB. So do yes. the BBB to BB. Um, I, I love that. Yeah. I will put all of that information um, and a link to that free worksheet so people can get started figuring out what Perfect. that new future looks like for them. So Jessica, I really appreciate you coming, your coming on and sharing the BB philosophy because it's such an important mindset for people who are thinking about going through or coming out on the other side of divorce and really any challenge in life. So thank you. Yes. Hey, thank you for having me. It was great to be here.